Number one, and probably the most obvious, is through sponsorship deals. But in this video, I'll share some ways podcasts can make money, even if nobody is tuning in. Traditional podcast sponsorships are sold on a CPM basis or cost per thousand basis. And generally, that means between $15 and $35 per thousand downloads. But of course, you're free to negotiate whatever rate you want or whatever rate you can get. So let's say your weekly show gets a thousand downloads and you sell two ad spots at maybe an average of 25 bucks a piece. That works out to $50 an episode or around $200 a month. Now, you can see how these numbers can become really big, really fast if you are listenership increases, if the frequency of episodes increases, and as you become more comfortable just including multiple ad spots. It has been reported that Joe Rogan, the king of podcasting, makes as much as $800,000 per episode. Now, I'm not quite there yet, but each episode of The Side Hustle Show is worth anywhere between $1,000 and maybe $10,000 and up, with these types of traditional sponsorships being a pretty big piece of that pie or a steady piece of that pie. Advertisers typically want to see your show reach around 5,000 downloads an episode, as measured by the number of downloads within the first couple months of that episode's release. But that's not to say you can't make a sponsorship deal even if your audience is smaller, especially if you cater to a niche audience. Number two is affiliate sponsorships. This is a great way for podcasters to get started because you don't need to have any minimum number of listeners to begin. All you need is a product or service that you like and you can recommend to your listeners with an affiliate or referral link. Explain, here's an easy way to support the show at no extra cost to you. In the personal finance space, Choose FI did this masterfully, recommending tools that would serve their audience like personal capital, M1 finance, their favorite rewards, credit cards, credible policy genius, simple, easy way to monetize from the very beginning. And a pro tip would be to use a WordPress plugin like Pretty Link to generate an easy to say affiliate URL like choosefi.com slash M1, which actually goes to an in-depth review on their site to add even more value. Number three is to sell your own products. Selling my own products is another podcast monetization angle that I've done over the years. In my case, it's mostly been books and courses. Bonus points if you register an easy to say URL and then redirect that over to the product. For example, my latest book is at 1k100ways.com and my latest course is at thetrafficcourse.com. Can you get a thumbs up for that tip? Number four is to sell your own services to listeners. The first thing that I ever sold on Side Hustle Nation was a private mastermind group with yours truly for $97 a month. It's hard to say how many mastermind members came through as a result of the podcast, but my guess is I would have been hard pressed to generate any applications without having first built that trust over time through the show. In 2015, the last full year that I hosted the masterminds, they earned $5,200. If you're a consultant or agency creating content for your target audience, selling your own services is the route that I would go. Number five is to sell your own services to guests. And here's an interesting tactic that can work even if nobody is listening. Josh Elledge runs an influencer agency and he uses his thoughtful entrepreneur show as what he called a speed dating prospecting tool to have conversations with interesting people who might just be ideal clients for his service. He explained that the daily show costs him around $40 to produce each episode, but that one in every four or five guests becomes a client. He says, every $200 I put into the machine, I get four to $6,000 out and it feels infinitely scalable. So for more on this strategy, definitely check out episode 361 of The Side Hustle Show. Monetization method number six is to sell your guests' products as an affiliate. For me, this is where some of the five or $10,000 plus episodes have come from. One example was Mark Will's loan signing system, which I honestly almost didn't air because it was so niche and I was worried, like, who's gonna be interested in this stuff? So Mark helps people become mobile notaries and get loan signing gigs for 75 to 150 bucks an appointment. So he comes on along with a successful student of his. They explain the ins and outs of this side hustle. And at the end, listeners can head over to Loan Signing System to learn more and see if his full course made sense for them. This is one of my most successful monetization strategies, but you gotta be careful with it. You can only do it with people that you trust to take good care of your audience. And you can't do it every week or else your show starts to feel like a maybe not so thinly veiled sales pitch for the guest. Number seven is to sell your guests services as an affiliate. This is almost an accidental income stream, but here's how it works for me. I typically ask guests for their entrepreneurial story, how they built their business. But if that business is a good fit for my audience, it's only natural for some of them to want to sign up as a client. 
That's exactly what happened when I talked with Gabe Arnold from Copywriter Today about how he built his content agency to 20 grand a month in recurring revenue. The episode wasn't about the value of creating consistent written content, but Gabe built trust with the audience and saw some signups as a result. Now, side note, if you are a service provider, go on podcasts. Seriously, this is a fast track to establish your authority and get in front of your target audience quickly. Number eight is listener donations. One fascinating way to monetize your show is from your listeners themselves. Joshua Sheets from Radical Personal Finance is an example of this. Joshua set up a pledge page on patreon.com and he's got over 200 backers now contributing a total of more than $1,500 per month at press time. Jen Briney hosts The Congressional Dish and earns several thousand dollars a month from her show, which is entirely listener supported. She accepts donations from Patreon, PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, and even paper checks in the mail. I have not tried this method myself because it seems a little bit weird for a business show to ask for money, but listeners have voluntarily PayPal'd me a few dollars or sent Amazon gift cards as a thank you, which I think is pretty sweet. Number nine is to repurpose your content. So far, most of these podcast monetization strategies have relied on at least some listeners tuning in, but the content repurposing strategy can earn you money even if no one ever listens to your show. How it works is you take some of the information from your episodes and turn it into other products like books or courses. Think Tim Ferriss, Tools of Titans, right? I have used podcast content to help build out several of my books, which create a new income stream from Amazon and help more people discover my work. Number 10 is to syndicate your show to YouTube. There's some controversy around this in podcasting circles, but I think YouTube is a massively overlooked discovery channel for podcasters. And it's got this viral element that most podcast apps simply don't have. So for years, I pushed my audio content over here to YouTube where not surprisingly, most episodes didn't get a ton of traction, but some, some have tens of thousands of views, all incremental listeners. And you never know where your next biggest fan or advocate is going to find you, where they're going to come from. So I like YouTube for that reason. And it's been a steady stream of passive income lately in the $600 a month range. It totally feels like free bonus money to me. Monetization strategy number 11 is to charge your guests. Yes, this is real. I've never attempted this, but there are some shows who do. For example, if you want to pitch your way onto Entrepreneurs on Fire, you might find a form like this requesting a $3,500 appearance fee because of the loyal audience that John Lee Dumas has built over the years. And monetization strategy number 12 is to charge for your content. There's a couple ways to do this. Some shows keep their uh, recent episodes for free, but charge for earlier episodes, the archive content. Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, one of my favorite shows, is an example of this. You can download his most recent episodes for free, but the older ones cost a buck 99 each on his website. And he also sells bundles of episodes and accepts listener donations. The other way to do this, to charge for your content, is to create a separate members only subscription podcast, which you can now facilitate directly through Apple Podcasts and several other podcast platforms. So what's the right monetization channel for you? I think it really depends on your niche and your audience. Every podcaster needs to find a way to support their show, but the most successful ones have found ways to do it in a way that still respects the listener. Because after all, the audience is what makes your show viable. It's not about you. It's not about your guest. It's about the listener and what they can gain from investing their time with you in their earbuds. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more money-making ideas.